What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Tabletop and Hobby Stop. Uh, I am so excited for all of the videos that I have to film for you guys. The problem is I just don't have enough time to film them all. Uh, and then we have Snarling Badger Studios threw a wrench into my plans. I was, uh, I have some MDF terrain over there. I was, I have, uh, the video worked up. I have everything kind of prepared for that video, but, uh, everything just keeps on happening that, that it doesn't seem it's going to come out. And then I know I have my core space campaign going on. I'm going to get back to that. However, Snarling Badger Studios just released their newest game and I'm going to put this I don't even have the physical copy yet. They released Majestic 13. Uh, what is Majestic 13? It is a modern X-Files style game where you are fighting against alien invaders coming to Earth uh, and you get to select one of 13 um, pseudo-government private military style groups, uh, grab five uh, team members and battle those aliens. So I'm super excited for it. I've actually been on a, an X-Files kit completely unrelated from this game. I did not know it was coming out until Friday when I saw one of their videos pop up. And of course I had to pick up the game and I would love to get a gameplay video going for you guys. This first video is just going to be me assembling my team and uh, building my first table. I think that that is a fair video to, to get out because the game, it's a 130 page rule book. Uh, it is a decent amount of stuff. So I think assembling my team and, and building that table just so you guys can see how that goes is going to be the smart move so, so we can use this almost as like a, uh, since it's a new game and there's not that many videos out, almost as a tutorial. Uh, I know that I personally like to see uh, those types of videos and I don't want to uh, pad the first gameplay video with an extra 20 minutes of, of this stuff. So we're going to start with assembling the team and what, that is, what that's going to entail is uh, I need to pick my team members, I need to roll for their stats, and then I need to choose which faction they're going to go with, advantages. Uh, there's psionics in this game, so kind of science magic, and then uh, we're, we're going to give our team equipment. So let's go ahead and roll right on into that. Uh, one of my favorite tabletop uh, war games is actually Spectre Miniatures. Uh, it is, as of this year, it is a, an out of print game. They offer uh, their own miniatures range. These ones are their older ones, they're, they're in metal. So I'm going to use these five guys. So the game advises that you use 25 millimeter bases, but Spectre Miniatures is a 20, 20 millimeter base game. Uh, so I do have these guys based on 20 millimeter. I'm not gonna change it. Um, I don't think it, it's gonna play too big of a role. Uh, this guy is going to be my commander because he has the fancy scarf. So having chosen the commander, the next thing that we do is actually going to be uh, to assign the stats to the team. And assigning stats is, is a simple process of, of rolling dice and adding, a, and adding five to them, basically. All right, here we go, rolling. We do 2d6 plus five. Okay, so that is nine. Oop. And that is for his acuity, so 14. Combat. 14 again, apparently. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe I should adjust the camera. That way you don't think I'm cheating. So 14 for his combat as well, which is pretty good so far. Dexterity is going to be 10. So not the most dexterous guy. Gonna do fortitude is going to also be 10. Psionics, we don't have any psionics yet. There's my stat block for uh, John McLeod, which uh, any of you Highlander fans out there, that's a shout out to exactly uh, the person you think it is. We're gonna keep on rolling right on down the line. And that is 
is what we have for our characters. Now, I am actually happy with those rolls. I, I don't think that we got, like, we didn't any roll any snake eyes. We didn't roll uh, sixes, but we didn't roll snake eyes either. So uh, it could be much, much worse. That is what we have for our stats right there rolled up. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe, maybe not. Hopefully so. Now that we have our stats all rolled up, the next step is actually going to be to choose your faction. Um, there are 13 factions, as I've said uh, before, and I'm going to run through those. I'm not going to give the rules, by the way, $14 for the rule book, uh, PDF, or I believe about 20 for the physical and the PDF rule book, 18 for the, for the extra cards that you don't need. They are optional, but let's go, go ahead and go through and we'll take a look. Uh, I had a couple of thoughts. On, on what I want to do, but I'm just gonna read these off and then I'll tell you in a minute here. So there's Odear, O-D-E-A-R. The, the names are kind of punny on these. And this is basically the wildlife arm. So next we have uh, Sight Ops. And this is basically going to be uh, back, back when uh, the LSD movement and all that was happening, you have all those people who are trying to unlock the power of the human brain down the road they've actually developed uh, uh, psychic tendencies st stuff like that agricultural league uh, this one I think is a playoff of all the crop circles and stuff and just uh, so you can be farmers basically which is cool industrial arm that is of course everyone who pulled together industry wise after World War II and then we have the sanctum which is the religious orders battle against the aliens and stuff like that I really like that idea it comes with a special base type so that one is definitely high on my list uh, silicon syndicate that is for technology the naturalized this is the aliens you can actually play as aliens in this game the naturalized women's defense force then we have roughnecks so these are miners sailors uh your blue collar workers uh pulling together we have uh section six which is the spies so this is going to be your your alphabet soup uh, the CIA, um, NSA. Then we have the Hippocratic Mercy. So your doctors, your, your hospitals. We have the 1%, which is the rich portion of the population. So they pull together. I'm guessing if you're gonna play the 1%, chances are you're gonna be playing as a, as a mercenary team, as it were. And then you have the dispersed. This is all of the people around the world who, who kind of know about it. Uh, and they pull together and they work uh, not as so much as an official agency as you would see CIA working as, but uh, more as hackers and, and, and conspiracy theorists and stuff like that. So guys, I'm really stuck between the Agricultural League, the Sanctum, and then also um, the Roughnecks. I'm going to read through the descriptions again and I'll be right back with you. So I chose the Roughnecks. Uh, those are the miners, the sailors, uh, all of that, the, the blue collar working guys. I thought that that would, would be super cool. Plus I really liked their, um, their abilities. So we have adaptability, uh, which ends up being that I get to ignore dangerous terrain. Uh, difficult terrain still acts the same, but I ignore dangerous terrain. And then uh, sharp and tough, I get to add plus two to acuity and fortitude for all of my people. And and then uh, one drawback of that is actually bureaucratic bias. So after the game, um, when I'm doing my bureau bureaucracy role, I'm going to get a minus one penalty uh, for all of my D6 rolls during step four. Okay guys, so looking through the advantages, I see one called ready to respond. Um, I could go through all of them, but, but there's a lot of them. Basically it comes down to better armor, better weapons, uh, stronger, um, more able to control different roles and, and things like that is what most of these are coming down to. Uh, psionic talent, but uh, ready to respond really spoke to me, spoke to my team kind of how I want them. I wanted this to be like a rapid response team. Um, so this, this actually works. Uh, your team is ready for anything. When something surprising occurs, you don't sweat it for a moment. 
When your team fails a foobar roll, i.e. roll six plus when testing for foobar, you may roll twice on the table and select either result. In addition, you may never suffer any penalty to the foobar roll. Example, you do not suffer the plus one to the roll when in an urban mission. This applies even in a co-op game. So I like this because foobar rolls are gonna happen, right? And I want them to happen, but I do want to be able to control my team and how they react and I want them to be able to uh, work past those. I want it to be a very, very uh, hardy team. Next up on the list of things to do is going to be select to select my equipment. So how equipment works is, is when you start you can only have phase one gear and then uh, you, you automatically receive one weapon and then you get to choose three pieces of gear, three pieces of phase one gear for each person uh, and you notate it down on your sheet. Now you can swap in between uh, characters, that's no problem, uh, but you get one piece to start and then it's dispersed. So we're gonna go through and do that real quick and I will let you know what I select. Okay guys, that is just about everything. I, uh, I went and I got all the equipment rolling. I'm gonna go ahead and read this off for you. That's, that's what everything is though. I tried to do a little bit uh, WYSIWYG, but not too much. I, I'm not holding myself uh, too hard to that. Uh, everyone, just just making it easy, everyone has an assault rifle, everyone has body armor, and everyone has target assist. Uh, where, we, where we mix it up here is my leader has a scanner. Uh, I have a guy in there with a med kit. I have uh, the, the lady there has an antitoxin to remove poison. I have one guy with a taser and one guy with uh, some track and be tracking beacons. So I think that that is a pretty solid starting list. Uh, my base allows me to get one more item and I think I know what I'll get, uh, but I'll worry about that in a minute. The base that I chose, guys, is actually going to be military command base. What that base allows is so I'm not allowed to get the advanced human mind data storage servers, uh, whatever that means. And then the benefits, I can request additional equipment post game. When your team engages in special missions, roll two D6 for each enemy. Each enemy begins the game with this amount of damage already applied. So this is just going to make me more effective at dealing damage, I'm gonna have a pretty damage heavy team here. So with my base, I'm allowed one more piece of phase one gear. And what I was going to do with that is I was actually going to give another person a med kit. And I was actually thinking that uh, since she has the antitoxin, I will go ahead and give her a med kit as well. That way I have two people on the table with a med kit. If one of them just gets completely burned down, it'll just add a little bit extra uh, of a safety net just to have two people um, with med kits. All right guys, all of the boring kind of off-camera stuff is done. I have built my uh, built my people. So we're going to run it down here just for a minute. We have John McLeod, the lead, leader. We have Angus Burns, my, uh, my med, uh, excuse me. Uh, Angus Burns is my medic, and then uh, we have Shoshana Albo. She is going to be kind of my pseudo medic, but she's really good at combat, so she's the backup. I rather have her shooting. Um, and then after that, we have Victor Baker and Hal Bishop. So Hal Bishop is going to be my tour de force here. He is going to be the guy who who I send in to shoot people, to track people, uh, just all around cause havoc. Uh, Victor is going to be his number two with the taser in case we need to put anyone down and trap them. Uh, and that is my team, guys. So we have a pretty solid lineup. And now we're going to move over and we're going to uh, set up that first mission. I'm going to, excuse me, guys, I actually spoke just a little too soon. Before I go changing everything, we're actually going to roll to see if we have an urban or a wilderness environment to start. And that's going to be one to three is wilderness, four to six is going to be uh, urban. So one, that is most assuredly going to be a wilderness environment. 
I'm going to roll uh, clockwise, starting top left, for the terrain that we're going to need. So three is going to be one large woods or rock formation and one ruin or broken down structure. All right, top right is going to be one large rock formation and D3 craters or small pools. So that is going to be three craters or pools, bottom left. So that's going to be uh, four again. So one large rock formation and we're going to go with two small pools. Uh, craters are small pools, so I'm going to have to figure something out for that. And then bottom right, uh, guys, we got another one of those. I'm going to roll that again just, just to change it up. All right, one, one large woods or rock formation and one small pool or clump foliage. Here we have it, guys. I have a couple of uh, maps that I had to put together here, so two, but I think they blend close enough. We have our wilderness scenario. Uh, we have our terrain rolled up that we are going to going to have to spread around. There is one other peak component to it, and that is determining what's going to be difficult or dangerous terrain. We're going to go ahead and, and roll for all of that. Uh, remembering that my team does ignore dangerous terrain. So we'll roll. Count everything but the ruined structure and the uh, small pieces of terrain as uh, difficult terrain. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of rock formations here. And I'm just kind of placing these how I feel looks good. Um, sometimes I'll take dice and I'll hold them above the, the quadrant for games like this and I'll drop them. And wherever the dice lands is where I'll uh, set my terrain. But for this, my first game, I'm just going to go ahead and set it up uh, how I kind of feel uh, will work out. So Okay, so I'm going to call this guy our old broken down, maybe burnt down cabin. This is one of my uh, fantasy terrain pieces that I use for Frostgrave. Then I'm gonna call these small rock outcroppings. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call these craters. So I'm gonna have this guy, these two small ones like that to represent a crater. And then I have a couple more that I need up here. I'll just randomly place those. There we go. All right, guys, so as an example, I'll use my, my black dice will be the rock and my white die will be the uh, clump foliage. And what I'll do is I'll hold it about six inches above, shake them up, mix them around, and I'll just kind of drop it. And that is our board. Uh, so we have basically difficult terrain, difficult terrain, uh, difficult terrain in the corner there. And then uh, this guy is not difficult terrain. Uh, in fact, I'll actually switch these to represent that because this guy looks a little bit more perilous than that guy. Uh, and then we have craters, crater, crater, and clump of foliage here. So that is what we have for our board setup. So another fun part about Bureaucracy 13 is actually the, uh, and what the extra cards are for, is actually the alien creature that you're going to be facing off again. You have your stalkers, your ravengers, and your monstrosity, and, and they act differently. And that should give you a decent amount of variety, not to mention there's special alien missions. So we're gonna, we're gonna roll on our chart here. I'm gonna just, don't know how well you guys can see that, but right there, we're just gonna roll on this chart, and we're going to uh, see who we're going to be facing off against. So I have a 17 on my D20 and five. So let's see here, we have 17 and five. It looks like we are going with the Benzith Nightbringer. Okay, Benzith Nightbringer. This terrifying alien creature personifies the stalker and hunter, perhaps best of all. It remains patiently out of sight until the perfect opportunity presents itself. When it does attack, it blinds its victims, uh, ensuring they have little chance to fight back before they are consumed. 
Phase one, Benzeth Nightbringer. Type, Stalker. Base, 40 to 60 millimeters. So that's gonna be something that I need to pay attention to. And then hit points, 105. Uh, and then defense, 20. Acuity, 25. Uh, combat is 21, dexterity 23, fortitude 18, and psionic is 18. So it looks like they have a little bit to them. And then we have uh, phase two, I'll, I'll save that. And then special abilities, careful stalker. I'm not gonna read the description on these, but we have careful stalker, patient predator, uh, and stalker in the dark. So this is definitely an ambush predator, uh, of course. And then we have their basic action is Dark Claws. Uh, then we have Nightbringer and Final Vision. So this looks like it's going to be a really fun uh, starting mission because we get to uh, root around and try to find this, uh, this super deadly alien creature. Now I need to find something that I'm going to classify as a Night Stalker. So I'm going to grab my minis. We have a couple of these guys. They're both, I, I did them up nice and dark. These guys would both work for Night Stalkers if we wanted to go that route. And then we have, these guys are almost a little bit too small and this guy I think is a little bit, little bit too bright. So we'll save him. But this guy also kind of speaks to me. They're, they say he has uh, claw attacks, and this guy kind of has some, some nice big claws. Plus, I really like this mini. I'm really proud of him. So I think this is going to be our Night Stalker. Uh, I have this big goopy alien, as, or this big slime that I have as well. We'll have, to, we'll have to save him for another time. I got a whole bunch of uh, aliens. And the nice thing is, is when you're playing a game, a sci-fi game, there's nothing to dictate what the what aliens should look like. So if you want them to be a giant cat because you have a bunch of giant cat figures for your D&D games or you want them to look like an owl bear, absolutely pull out an owl bear. I think they were intentionally vague with the description. Uh, so I think they were intentionally vague with the description so that you could uh, you could kind of bring your minis in to fit uh, very loosely into this very loose uh, description. I said something about not doing the bureaucracy role, but, but reading back through it, I think, I think it'd be a good idea for me to go ahead and do that bureaucracy role. Uh, just because this is the, the setup that we're going with. And then we have, I need to roll 2d20. And we have 18 and 11 location information incorrect so looks like i need to add some additional terrain to the board roll one additional time on the terrain table for each board half uh, that is difficult terrain so the the trees are difficult terrain okay guys and the very last thing i have to do uh, is to do the uh, deployment. So we'll do one through three. Uh, my team will deploy up there, and then three through six is going to be down here. Or I mean, uh, four through four through six is down here, and we have a six. So we will deploy down here, and then we have one, two, three, four, five pieces of terrain. Uh, I will re-roll sixes. So two, the monster is going to start in there. I almost forgot, almost forgot the uh, secondary objective. So this is the last thing. Uh, this is the last thing, secondary objective, before we call this video done and then I will have the gameplay up in no time to you guys. So we have a six, alien tissue collection. Uh, your team, archives this uh, secondary objective if over the course of the mission any members of the team move into or onto each piece of terrain that the alien creature is occupying or had previously occupied i.e. all terrain pieces the alien creature had been in or on all members of your team receive one additional experience 
in addition to the normal one bonus experience for the secondary objective if this secondary objective is complete. All right, guys, that is everything I need to start my first game of Majestic 13. I'm going to uh, wait to deploy my characters until we are over into the uh, game one. I have all of their stats done up. I'm going to go ahead and put that on screen over here. I'm going to put it on screen for the game as well. But uh, I wanted to go through this just, just so we can all see how the character creation works. Because um, I know that helps me personally when I'm starting a new game. And since this one's brand new, we don't have a lot of material on it. Um, go ahead, if I made any mistakes, or if I make any mistakes in the future, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Go ahead and put those down in the comments. I appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. I, once again, I appreciate you guys getting me over that 100 subscriber milestone. And that, that's huge for me. I appreciate it, guys. And I look forward to seeing you in Majestic 13 Game 1 coming up soon.